because of the incredible support here is a discount code for 25% of all clothing on vintagegenetics.com easter 25 119.2 Right guys, just got back from doing cardio. As you saw in the morning, I weighed around 119.2 kilos and I'm now 15 weeks out from the show I'll do to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, which I'm very excited about. I just want to be in the best shape possible and this time not only in the videos and pictures but also on the stage where it counts. So I just did some 30 minutes of cardio which is always a starting point for me uh, simply every single day and then also before bed about 15 to 20 minutes of walking outside which is just a very nice way to split up the activity throughout the day because in the middle of the day I like to do my workout. But anyway. I'm going to create the breakfast right now and show you what it's all about. So what we have here is cream of rice. We all know it. We all know what it is. It is rice blended up into a nice cream. However, this doesn't come from a package. It actually comes, uh, where is it? Right here. From rice. So this is actual rice and I put this in the blender. 100 grams, blend up for like a minute, and it has become cream of rice. Much cheaper, and it tastes the exact same. No need to pay for a package of cream of rice at all. Just blend it up yourself. Yes, it does make some noise, but the same results you will get as if you would have bought the package. So that's much cheaper, and we're going to be adding some stuff to this as well. All right, I have a breakfast here with me right now. As you can see, a gorgeous breakfast with some cream of rice, 100 grams, 100 grams of blueberries. We also have 60 grams of whey isolate for the protein, of course. And we also have some chocolate, uh, 30 grams. However, normally I would use uh, dark chocolate, at least 80%, but we unfortunately ran out. And we actually still had some chocolate bars in the closet that we haven't, you know, we never, literally never eat. So whenever this happens, I simply take a little chunk of those chocolate bars, put it in my oatmeal. Macros are pretty much the same. The only difference is that there's now less fat, more sugar in here, and less phytonutrients. So yes, in terms of health and benefits, you're going down in terms of how positive this meal is for your workout, for example. But in terms of fat loss, nothing will really change, especially when, you know, even though there's more sugar in this chocolate, you combine it with the whole meal, and then the uh, glycogen, I mean, the insulin response, isn't that much different compared to the dark chocolate anyway. But yes, it is not as healthy. But still, it's a nice way to clean up that um, stack in the closet without actually having to eat the bar on its own. Okay, next to that, we also have a kiwi. <clears throat> A kiwi right here, which is very good for protein digestion as well. A uh, very good start of the day. Had some nice vitamin C, some nice fibers, and of course some extra carbs as well. Because usually this breakfast is my pre-workout meal. However, now I have some appointments at the gym, uh, some posing classes actually, which are slowly starting up again. So this will be my first meal of the day, and the second meal of the day will be my pre-workout meal for the chest workout and i'm 15 weeks out and i just want to take you guys every single week through my diet and my training and the updates what i'm doing to get in better and better shape for the next contest because every single time i do a contest i want to improve about myself and i don't want to be the same as last time i want to be better as you guys have seen from the last prep to the olympia when i was in aruba you know that the prep itself went pretty well. The prep itself was successful. However, the end result wasn't as good as it could be. This time, that will be rectified and the prep will be even better. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy this meal and show you the second one. Alrighty guys, just got uh, to the gym. Did some measurements for face-to-face -face coaching and some posing lessons, which was pretty awesome because, you know, conditioning is there. Anyway, I'm gonna have my pre-workout meal right here. 
This is, trust me, delicious. As you can see, there's some golden rice, 80 grams uh, uncooked, transformed to about 240 grams. We have some white fish, about 250 grams of beautiful, soft, tender, flaky codfish. We have some carrots, which uh, digest really easily, don't cause any gastric discomfort, and also some uh, parsnips, which actually taste pretty amazing as well. However, these parsnips, they have around 70 calories per 100 grams, comparing it to the rest of the vegetables, around 20 calories per 100 grams, so they have more carbs. So later on during this prep, I will decrease, I'll leave out the parsnips from my meals and put mostly peppers, a little bit of carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, stuff like this with my meals to reduce it like that automatically because... If you keep them in until the very end, yes, that's a very uh, that's a possibility if you like to eat a lot of vegetables, but you will get some gastric discomfort if you're, you know, basically every single meal you eat consists of a lot of vegetables. So the balance has to always be there. And I've also put 10 milliliters of walnut oil in here. Let me show you right here. This tastes also amazing and it's very healthy. Some good omegas in there for sure. So yeah, that's the meal and I'm going to enjoy it right now. In about 45 minutes, I'll have a coaching Q&A. So I'm actually, uh, you know, the host of a Facebook Vintage Genetics Transformation Coaching Group. And every single week I'm doing a personal Q&A for the people in there. And uh, that's, if you follow my Instagram, you see my stories that I want to bring people to the best shape of their life. Well, that's that group. And uh, it's pretty awesome to coach them. Uh, really motivated group for sure. They get really detailed workout and nutrition plans. And of course, uh, they can talk to me via messenger instead of having to wait for emails. But that is a higher segmented coaching, of course. So that really depends on what kind of coaching you look for. But anyway... I'm gonna enjoy this meal, then do the Q&A, and then have a nice chest workout. Okay guys, we arrived at the chest workout. Already did some warm-up sets on this Smith Machine incline bench press. However, normally I like to use a 15 degree incline. Now it's at least a 30 degree incline because it's then a different version of the incline Smith Machine uh, chest press, bench press, and uh, using different versions allows you to progress with different weights on different exercises. Or sometimes I start with this one, other times I start with a slider incline. So uh, let's do this first working set. So as I mentioned, this incline bench press is in a slightly steeper incline than what I'm used to. If you look at the bench, you can put it in a less steep incline if you want. But I like to do different kinds of angles to start out my workouts with. So I have three different chest workouts. One where I start on the uh, smallest incline, one on this incline, and one uh, where I do a chest press, so an entirely different uh, exercise. And uh, the dumbbell presses and stuff like this will be uh, done throughout the workout. But one important thing to always keep in mind during the bench press, no matter which version it is, whether it's the Smith Machine bench press or the free weight bench press, in my opinion, you should always go all the way down. If you look at bodybuilders with the biggest chests, they usually go all the way down and maybe not go all the way up. For example, if you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger back in the day, he went all the way down and all the way up, so full range of motion, which is what he was all about, of course. If you look at Ronnie Coleman, he, goed, he went all the way down, but not all the way up. It actually has been proven that the most important part of the range of motion of the bench press, any bench press, is the bottom part. So even if you're super strong, uh, and you're not going all the way down, but you're doing a lot of weight, a lot of the tension won't go to those deep muscle fibers to cause the maximum growth in the chest because a lot of it will go to the triceps, for example. That's not where you want it. Okay, guys, it's time for the next exercise, the flat dumbbell press. So we just did an incline bench press. 
which uh, on the strength machine, which is not really a free weight movement, this will be a free weight movement with dumbbells. And the second exercise should always be uh, automatically lighter relatively to the first one because the first one takes most of your energy. So I always recommend to do the first exercise to make it one of the exercises that you feel really well in the muscles and the second one and all the others you still feel uh, really well as well but as long as the first one really targets the chest or any other muscle group you're training at that time very effectively then the workout is already you know at least half complete already because that movement targets the chest so well the other movements will simply finish the chest off with less weight but with more blood in the muscle so uh, let's do this all right, we all know it, the flat dumbbell press, one of the most popular movements there is, one of the most old school movements there is, which is, of course, what I love to do. Free weights have a very important place in bodybuilding, even at the highest level. Um, but I'm not doing this uh, during this prep at the as the first exercise, because I get quite strong doing these. We have 70 kilos. Uh, dumbbells here which is above 150 pounds maybe 160 I'm not sure uh, but I can do those uh, 12 times pretty easily uh, pretty quickly when I start the movement I'm going to start the workout with that movement and my uh, right bicep tendon is a little bit inflamed and when you're alone you have to somehow put those dumbbells uh, you know in this position right here so from a seated position to this position requires quite a lot of bicep uh, tendon strength as well and one wrong move and it might injure that muscle that's not what I want so now I'm not able to go as heavy anymore as I mentioned earlier uh, after the bench press because I already did an exercise so the chest is already pre-fatigued so now the maximum weight I was able to do is 60 kilos still relatively heavy but uh, you know in terms of how it feels it feels a whole lot lighter to handle and then those bigger 70 kilo dumbbells and here also go all the way down and going all the way up is not necessary uh, because then the tension is lost Okay guys, it's time for the next movement. It's not going to be a regular pressing movement as heavy. It's actually going to be a super set to fill up the chest. Now for most people who have a weak chest, I recommend doing at least one more true progressive overload movement. But for me, I'm going to combine two movements to fill the chest up with blood as much as possible, as that is a secondary way of hypertrophy or muscle growth. Uh, getting a lot of toxins in there, metabolic damage, making a good pump cause muscle growth and we all love a good pump so I'm doing cable flies with bodyweight dips, supersets until failure, three times, let's do this. So back in the day I used to train for mostly the pump and a little bit of strength so there will be key movements I would remember like the bench press, the squat, uh, the t-ball row, the lat pull down, just some basic movements that I would remember the weight of so next time I would try to go heavier. Uh, especially the bench press and that's why my chest grew quite quickly um, because the bench press really worked for me personally but for a lot of people it doesn't um, but after a while I started to move away from only having the bench press as a strength movement but also a lot of other movements just like I did at the beginning of this uh, workout the Smith machine inclined bench press for example using all of those to increase my strength as well truly logging them and making sure I get stronger but my point is I moved away from doing that pump workouts uh, back in the day I uh, did make a lot of progress but I I uh, reached a plateau because I wasn't gaining any strength anymore. Now that I've gained quite a lot of strength again, I like to combine that with some pump work, which to me is the best of both worlds. So first you do at least, guys, at least two movements that you go all out on to improve your strength within the hypertrophy rep range, which is around 
8 to 12 and 15 to 20 reps. Once you beat yourself in terms of strength compared to last time and you know that you're overall getting stronger, then if it's a strong muscle group, you can combine it with more pump work to really get a lot of blood in the muscle. So that prevents injuries as well, because if you would do four heavy presses, it's simply a lot more tension and stress on the joints, the tendons, more risk of injury, stuff like this. And of course, when you're very young, you don't want to think about this, but I've been training for 14 years by now, and I'm starting to feel little pains here and there from training very heavy every single workout for the last two years. So when I know that you know, my chest is a stronger muscle group, I will divide the workout into strength movements, so heavy movements, but also pump movements, which simply work to grow muscle. Okay guys, after filling up the chest, it's pretty much done for today and I always like to combine the side delts with the chest so to finish the delts off because I don't have a separate shoulder day, I like to do some side lateral raises. Already did some warm up so let's now start with the working set. A lot of volume and a lot of blood in the muscle. Let's do this. The side Dumble lateral raise. It's a very popular movement, but not a lot of people do it in the best way, in my opinion. You can do this way more efficiently because I'm only using 10 kilos here, yet if you look at the shoulder mass, you might think, well, isn't he able to do heavier? Isn't he able to do more weight? Yes, I would, but then it's almost impossible to isolate only that side delt. The body really wants to move a weight as efficiently as possible, uh, reducing the amount of energy that it takes for one muscle to move that weight. However, we as bodybuilders, we do want to make it as difficult as possible because that actually causes a signal from your brain to tell your muscles, hey, you gotta grow because this was really difficult. So what you then wanna do is choose a lighter weight, but then use way more reps to increase the lactic acid, to increase the toxins, to increase the pump, the blood flow, and that way you can isolate the side delts, use a lot more volume, make sure to fill that muscle with blood, and actually make it grow without targeting other useless muscles at that time. The next movement is the tricep pushdown. I, uh, you know, for a few months now, I like to start all of my tricep exercises with a pushdown variation, whether it's the rope, whether it's the bar, or this uh, Tyron grip, ergonomic grip, uh, which feels very nice. But in all cases, I go all the way up, as you can see, and the higher I go, you look at my tricep, and you can see it's stretching out more. So that's why I go up so high. Okay, guys, last tricep set. I'm gonna go to failure, and then do a drop set, and then it's the end of the workout. Nice chest pump, side del pump, tricep pump. Let's do this. And to finish off my earlier point, so I start out with the tricep pushdown to really warm up the triceps. And I'm only showing you one working set of each of these exercises, but I did three working sets uh, for each of them because all of these movements that I do for the triceps feel really good. And I want to maximize their effect by exposing my muscle to more volume using that exercise by using an extra working set. Because normally I would only do two working sets and I've increased it to three working sets on most movements that I really feel within the muscle. So when I'm giving the um, option to either do five exercises and one of them I don't really like for the muscle and do two working sets, or four exercises where I feel all of the movements really well and do three working sets on most of them, that's for sure the one I would choose as a bodybuilder who wants to grow their muscles as big as possible. Alrighty, just got back home and now it's time for the post-workout meal. Already had a post-workout shake uh, consisting of 60 grams of white isolate for a nice protein bump. 
But about, you know, half an hour later, 15 minutes to half an hour, I have the post workout meal. Let me show you what that is. So in the very much used air fryer, there are some potato fries. This is for me and for Marley. So I have about 450 grams of potatoes with minimal amounts of fats, but it's very delicious in the air fryer. It's uh, one of the best ways to make potatoes very tasty with minimal amounts of fat. What we also have is about 260 grams of codfish. Also very delicious. I put a little bit of uh, actually some celery salt on there. So it's salt mixed with celery seeds ground up. Tastes pretty good. And in here, which you can see, I have some uh, Brussels sprouts. So that's going to be the complete meal. So I wanted to take you guys through my current nutrition plan on a workout today, such as that you saw in this video. This is mostly the plan I'll be following right now. And uh, this is, these are my macros right here. So I want to show you exactly what I'm up to nutrition wise. And every single week, as we are now 15 weeks out, the further along in the prep we go, I'm going to show you exactly what will change. So you get an insight in how someone like me would prep for a bodybuilding show on a professional level. So how did this plan come to be anyway? Well, this is the plan I've been following through the off season. So all of these meals right here are pretty much the same as I followed off season, except in the off season, as you can see, this is the post workout meal right here. Uh, instead of just basmati rice, I would actually add like a Turkish bread or a bagel or something like that to add on top of that. And with dinner with my girlfriend, sometimes we add a cookie at the end or something else, a nice treat in the off season, which would easily bump up the calories by a thousand on average on a weekly basis. So that has been taken out. And since then I've lost two kilos. So that's, you know, taking out the junk is the first thing that you do when you go from the off season to a prep. And now what I can do is all the yellow here is the carbs. That's usually the first thing you look for when you want to lose some weight, you hit a plateau. What do you do? You decrease the carbs. So we have, for example, meal two here and meal three right here. These would be the first to decrease. As you can see, meal four, that has also been a difference because in the off season, this was also have 80 grams of basmati rice. Now it doesn't have anything. And uh, that's the first major change I made to give my body, my instant response, uh, blood sugar, uh, all of that, a break, a rest, at least during one meal of the day. And uh, at the end of the prep, usually most of the meals don't have carbs except for the breakfast and the post workout meal. And that's what we're slowly going to go to. But you have to do this slowly because if I go zero carbs right now, and you then hit a plateau, what will you do? That's the problem. So as you can see, this is my diet. This will be the diet plan that will change mostly. On the rest day, you can just imagine all of these carbs to be gone, the cream of rice to be less, uh, the post workout meal to be gone, for example. Uh, that's a much lower day anyway, already to reset everything regardless. But this is the plan you will guys uh, see every single week change and uh, my my body with it so every single week i want to do an update video of my shape of you know what i'm doing in terms of working out in terms of nutrition supplementation stuff like this so uh guys this was the video thank you for watching and don't forget to stay golden